What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Mutt Tips. I'm your host, Sean Taylor from the Made Up Theater, and let's jump into today's topic, the short form guessing game of Crying Story. A few people have been reaching out to me asking for recommendations for improv games that you can play right now, especially during this whole shelter in place time that we're living in. And a great game that works right now, and it really respects social distancing because you can improvise this game on Zoom or Skype or Google Hangouts, and it's a game that's called Crime Story, or also known as Interrogation Room. One person in this game is gonna be the guesser, and they're deemed as the criminal, someone who's committed a crime. And ideally two to three uh, people are gonna be the clue givers, and they're usually gonna be characters like the cops, uh, maybe a lawyer or like a witness, some characters that might enter this situation. And they're gonna try to get the guesser to guess a crime, a motive, and an accomplice. The crime can be something like mundane, something that's not an actual crime, like some activity that you do around the house, something that's not illegal. So like brushing your teeth, for example, might be the crime. A motive is something that is you know, the reason behind doing this crime. For example, why did they brush their teeth? needs to be unrelated to that crime though. So maybe they were brushing their teeth because they wanted to win the lottery, okay? So that's an example of a motive. And the accomplice is gonna be, you know, a celebrity, a historical figure, cartoon character, fictional character, something like that, someone they did it with. And by dropping these hints, ideally by the end of the game, the guesser guesses the crime, motive, and accomplice. Let me pass it to a clip so you can see how the game works. Well, 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 Bobby. Well, huh? well, well, look who it is, Copper Duracell. <laughs> yeah, it sure is, it's me, Copper Duracell. Whoa, huh? whoa, relax, okay? Relax. Oh, Hank, I didn't know you were working here. Yeah, you know, hey, let's go do darts sometime. Yeah, I love bowling alleys. Oh. You know what stinks? You and the crime that you committed, huh? Well, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't like showering. What of it? I don't Look, have to man, take a shower. Look, man, we just need you to help us out, okay? You know, all that mm. knowledge about what you did, just dump it out for us. Lay it out on the floor. Yeah, lay it out yeah. on the floor. On, on maybe yeah. a Friday, if that's your yeah, day. Yeah, I, I like to clutter up my room. I like to be dirty. That's nothing wrong with that, is yeah, there? what do you call dirt and clutter, huh? Huh? Dirt all and that clutter? stuff piling up. Uh, I call dirt and clutter, uh... Uh, mm. Well, literally I, dirt and clutter is seems, what I normally It seems like the guilt's getting pretty big. I'd say it's getting hefty, hefty, hefty. Oh, right. I got a lot of trash in my room. What yeah, about yeah, yeah. It? What yeah. do you do with that trash, huh? Well, I like to just have it all around. And, and Oh, you do like yeah. to have it around? Oh, it looks like it's Tuesday night. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so I took the trash out. Oh, that's right. not against the law. Awesome, so that's an example of how the game works. Now, let's jump into some tips on how you can maximize the fun with one of my favorite improv games. First of all, Crime Story is a guessing game, no doubt, but a pitfall that people fall into sometimes is that it just becomes a guessing game which means it's just guess after guess after guess after guess, and there's no scene or characters to be had. It's focused on just achieving the victory of getting the, the answer correct. But the thing is, is I played this game before where myself or the guesser get nothing right, but it's still a hilarious, fun scene. And that's something that we really wanna focus on, is having a nice setup to the crime story game. So take about 15 to 30 seconds before you jump into the clue giving to establish a setup. Who are your characters? Maybe you know the criminal because they you know, commit a lot of misdemeanors around town all the time. They're the regular criminal around town. Establish voices, establish personality, and then jump into the clue giving, okay? This game can be a time game of three minutes, but don't focus on time right now. Focus on setup and then get to the payoff of giving clues. Let's start with giving tips to the clue givers. So again, in this game, you wanna have like ideally two to three clue givers. And the first two clue givers generally will play the cops. And a good trope to go to is the good cop, bad cop dynamic. And I see this game played a lot where usually the two cops are both bad cops, like they yell and they're angry, but play around with different dynamics. I really like the good cop, bad cop dynamic. So try that out. Have a, you know, a strong status, have character, have personality. Again, incorporate that into your setup before you give clues. And ideally when you're giving clues, you wanna be on the same page with each other, okay? Which means make sure give and take a focus is really strong, okay? So if cop number one gives a clue, cop number two should support that clue and give a clue that also is complementary to what they just said. So for example, if the crime was maybe eating hot tamales, 
Ideally, what you wanna do is focus on getting the guesser to guess eating first. If cop one gives a clue trying to get them to guess eating and then cop two jumps straight to hot tamales as a clue, they're a little disconnected. So focus on like climbing the ladder, okay? Imagine the first run of the ladder is eating and the second ladder run is gonna be hot tamales. Work together. When you're giving clues at first, try to be subtle. Don't be super on the nose and obvious to the point where the game is easy and the guesser just gets it immediately. So if you're trying to get the guesser to guess eating, it's best not to come out and be like, oh, look at you, you're looking pretty hungry, huh? Bet you wanna put some stuff in your mouth. That they're gonna get it really quick, right? So focus first on dropping subtle hints that can lead them in a bunch of different directions. And their guesses might be far off, but you get an idea of where their head is at and you can adjust your clues. So maybe say, hey, you know, I'm getting real tired of you chewing me out here in this interrogation room, I'm sick of it. Or you know what, I don't like it when you mouth off to me. Or maybe reference the time of day. It's like, huh, look at that, it's noon. I bet you're feeling urges, you know? Those are like subtle or clues that can lead them to guess some things that might be far off, but that's the fun of the game. This game is like teaching a baby how to speak. You're gonna get a lot of wrong errors, but that's the fun of the game. And then when they get it right, boom, you get a huge reaction from the audience. So show the struggle. When you're constructing your clue, the best way to think about it is to take whatever it is you're trying to get your guesser to guess and break it down and free associate to arrive at puns or play on words. So if you're trying to get them to guess brushing your teeth, maybe you'll think of like brands of toothpaste and use that as a part of your clue. So you might walk in and be like, well, look at you, looking all sad, huh? You know what you did. Don't play this whole crestfallen act. Crest is an example of a clue related to toothpaste. Or you might come in and say, yeah, we've been to your house looking for some evidence, can't find it though. I know, notice the lack of awards and plaques on your wall, huh? You never were a winner, huh? That's another reference to like plaque, which is a reference to brushing your teeth. So anything like that, it's all helpful. And again, the audience is in on it. They understand why you're saying this. And it's all about training your guesser to get on your wavelength, which can be tough, but it's a lot of fun. And puns and play on words work really well, especially for the accomplice, which again is usually a celebrity or a cartoon character. They have a body of work attached to them. They have references that you can go to. If the suggestion was Tom Hanks for the accomplice, you wanna be, you know, obviously subtle at first. You don't wanna walk in and say, hell oh, yeah, lice like a box of chocolates, or run, Forrest, run. Because everybody knows Forrest Gump, they know it's Tom Hanks. That's really obvious. But if you go in and say, hey, you know, I heard you're hanging out with a new guy, huh? He's trying to be a big criminal out there, trying to make a real big splash in this world, you know? You don't have to use both of those references side by side, but those are a little more subtle. They take a little extra work to get uh, that person to get to Tom Hanks. So be subtle, work up to the more obvious. And feel free as the clue giver to, you know, play different characters too. If you have three clue givers, you're not gonna start with all three clue givers out there. The third person I consider the person who just comes in every so often and maybe drops in a clue and then leaves and comes in as multiple characters. Or they might come in at some point as maybe the lawyer and they stick around and give clues that way. But if there's two people giving clues, you know, you can always just leave and come in as a new character. Just make it really clear. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna go to the evidence locker for a bit. I'll be right back. And then when you come back in, maybe you come in as like, ah, oh, hey, what are you doing talking to my client this way? I'm representing them now. Now you're coming in as a lawyer. So play different characters, have fun. Again, it's a scene, not just a game. And a few quick tips for the guesser is, first of all, you're gonna be wrong. Be okay with that. You're gonna have a lot of wrong guesses and that's the fun of the game. So don't get frustrated, get excited. If it feels like you're struggling and you're not getting it right, let it fuel you more, okay? Because you might play the whole game and not get a single thing right, but it could be the most entertaining thing in the entire world. I've seen it before, trust me. And the best way to embrace excitement in this game as a guesser is to embrace a character. Because if you go into this game as you, you're gonna get frustrated sometimes because you're being you. You're getting frustrated in a guessing game, just like you might get frustrated in the game of Pictionary as yourself. So if you go in as a character, like, you know, whatever you want, you could be a mob boss, you could be a femme fatale, you could be an eccentric billionaire. If you go in as that type of a character, you won't get frustrated because here's the thing, if you're a character in an interrogation room, your goal is to not confess, right? So all of your wrong guesses are a success because you're not confessing. So try that out, be a character, don't be you. And the biggest thing that the guesser needs to do is you need to listen. 
you're looking for positive reinforcement. So anytime you receive that, that is a part of your guess now, okay? So if you say like, all right, you know, maybe I was like eating, you know, nachos. And then the clue givers might say, yeah, yeah, you were eating all right, that's for sure. That's positive reinforcement. So you know eating is a key word in this confession. Because ultimately your goal is to confess the crime motive and accomplice. And the best way to end the game is to say it from start to finish at the very end. So when you get to the accomplice, if the accomplice was Taylor Swift, rather than saying, all right, I did it with Taylor Swift. If you are 100% sure or close to 100% sure it's Taylor Swift, confess the entire thing from start to finish. So it doesn't appear to be just like, you know, a, a sudden guess that might be like, oh yeah, I guess that was Taylor Swift. You say, all right, all right, I was brushing my teeth and I, I did it because I wanted to win the lottery and I did it with Taylor Swift. And boom, during that uh, confession from start to finish, you're eliciting a drum roll on the audience's lap and they're ready. They're ready for that confession so that you can get that massive pop to conclude the game. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of Mutt Tips. Thank you so much for checking it out. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, like it down below or comment with somebody who would like addressed in a future video. I'd love to hear it. You know, if you want suggestions for other things you can do during this whole shelter in place thing, please let me know. I'd love to help out. Also, subscribe on YouTube to be informed of upcoming videos. We do online shows now as well. Go to madeuptheater.com and click on the online shows tab for more information about that. Support your local businesses and I'll see you next time for another episode of Mutt Tips. Bye.